Bats are very interesting animals. They are the only flying mammal. So they have fur. They're not a bird. They're a mammal. And they live all over the world and can be a wide variety of sizes. They can be so small that they weigh less than a penny. And the largest of the bats can weigh as much as a pretty good size guinea pig. So this guinea pig weighs a little more than two pounds, but the biggest bats weigh more than three pounds and have a wingspan of up to six feet. So this guinea pig is quite small, but imagine a mammal with a body similar in size to the guinea pig, but with wings that stretch six feet from tip to tip. Pretty impressive. Those big bats eat fruit. They're called fruit bats. So here are the parts that you'll need to make your own bat. You'll need two felt cutout bats. And if you want to be able to change the shape of your bat in terms of its wing position, you'll need a little bit of wire, and I'll show you how to use that. And you'll also need some basic sewing some supplies, needle and thread, and some scissors. Now, to start out, you'll need to thread your needle. Now, sometimes it helps to give yourself just a little pep talk. Remind yourself that people have been threading needles and sewing things for hundreds of years, so you can do this. Now, the trick is to make sure that you don't have any fuzzy bits on the end of your string. So you'll want to give it a nice snip with some very sharp scissors. You'll take your needle. You want to have that thread just barely poking out between your fingers. If it's long and dangling, it's very hard to get it to go onto your needle. But if you have just the tiniest bit sticking out, you'll look for that hole on your needle and you'll just remind yourself, I got this and you slide that needle onto the thread. And then once it's poking through a tiny bit, you grab that tiny little tail and you pull. Now, you'll notice that as I'm pulling, I now have two strands of thread because it's going in one side and out the other of the needle. And you'll pull until you have about maybe two feet of thread and then you'll snip. And the next thing you'll need to do is make a knot. Now, here's a trick for making a knot in the end of your thread. You've got those two tails lined up next to each other. You're gonna take your finger and twist, whoops, you're gonna wrap the thread around your finger so that it makes the shape of an X. See how the tail is just barely sticking out there? And then you'll just roll it so that that tail rolls around and around the length of, of thread. Now, once you've got a whole bunch of twists, you'll just pull on that thread and you get a nice knot. And if it doesn't work the first time, try again. Or maybe you or someone in your family has another method that they really like to use for making a knot. This is the method my mom taught me, so I'm passing it on. All right, now we're ready to stitch. So you have your two layers of felt that are cut out in the shape of a bat. And you, if you have a pin, you might want to pin them together. If you don't, it's no biggie. Felt is pretty good at um, sort of sticking to itself so it won't slide around too much. But if you happen to have a pin, the way you use a pin is you'll just push it through both layers of fabric and then back up through both layers of fabric just to hold those two pieces together. And then you can do the same thing on the other side the other wing through both pieces of fabric and back up through both pieces. Now when we start to stitch here we're gonna start at the bat's tail and we'll work our way out along the edge of the wing and back and we'll stop when we get to the other side of the bat's ears. Now one trick for stitching is to start on the inside so you're pushing the needle in and you're making it so that your knot ends up hidden on the inside of your of the fabric. 
Now, when you're stitching, one type of stitch you can use here is called a blanket stitch, where you stitch through both layers of fabric and then through the loop of your thread and then gently pull. Now, sometimes it's tempting to pull fast, but usually what happens when we pull fast is we get a tangle. Tangles happen, it's no big deal, but if you want to try to avoid tangles, stitching just a little bit more slowly makes it less likely that the thread will get all wound around itself into a knot. So this blanket stitches through both layers of fabric and then through the loop that your string makes and pull. I'll show you one more time. Through both layers of fabric, through this loop that your string makes. And it's kind of hard to see on this black thread on the black fabric, but it's making a stitch that holds the edge shut, which is helpful if we decide we want to put a little bit of stuffing inside of our bat. However, if you want to stitch in a different way just to hold those two pieces together, that will be just fine also. So once you've stitched all the way around one wing and both ears, you'll want to stitch about three times in one spot just to make a little knot so that it won't come undone. And one interesting thing about a bat is that that wing, the bones in a bat that make up that wing, are actually the same bones that humans have in their hands. So they've got these bones that are kind of like fingers. It's the same structure um, that holds out that very thin skin in their wings that allows bats to be the only mammal that can fly. Now, I'm finding that my the pins are now kind of in the way. So this next step, I'm going to show you how to make it so that your bat will have wings that you can bend and they'll stay put. This wire is really cool. There's metal inside of it. It has a plastic coating on it, but on the inside is metal. And metal has this really interesting property. It's called malleable. So it, this is two strands of wire, so I'm just untwisting them so that I can have a single strand. Now, the cool thing about metal is that property of being malleable allows the metal to bend and stay put, right? When I bend a, the wing of this, just the fabric, of this bat, it bends, but then it goes right back. It doesn't keep its position. And if I tried to bend something like a stick or a twig or a piece of glass, those things, if you bend them, they snap, right? They would break, they're brittle. So the cool thing about metal is that it can be bent, and then when you bend it, it stays in that position and you can bend it again. So here's what we're gonna do with this wire. You're going to take the two ends, you're making a little loop, you're taking the two ends and you're just twisting them around each other so that you don't have any pokey ends. And then once you have a loop, you're going to kind of flatten it out and twist it so that it turns into the shape of sort of an eight. Now you want it to be about the same wingspan as your bat. And what you're gonna do is just slide it inside. So this isn't gonna be visible, this is gonna be hidden inside of your bat, but it's going to make it so that if you want, you can change the positions of your bat's wings and they'll stay, which is kind of fun. Now, the next job is that we'll just keep stitching around the edge. Now, some people might want their bat to be a little bit puffier and to do that you just take some stuffing and slide it inside the bat. Some people might stitch on either side of the body and make just the body chubby or you could do more of it and just let the whole thing be a little bit puffier. So 
you for stuffing you could use some fabric scraps or a little bit of dryer lint and you'll just tuck it right inside there so I'm gonna take off that pin so that I can fit it in there and you can just tuck a little bit of dryer lint inside where the body is and you'll just keep that wire hidden and then you can use your pin to just hold that wing shut again. Now, if you decide that you don't want to have wire or stuffing inside of your bat, that's fine too. You can just stitch it up. So as you're stitching, you're gonna keep in mind that tangles happen and they're not the end of the world. Remember not to panic. If you get a tangle, you just need to you can sometimes use the tip of your needle to undo the tangle. Sometimes you need to um, actually just snip off the thread that's tangled and just re-thread your needle and continue on. No big deal. So you can see I'm just continuing with that stitch around the edge of the bat. Remember, you can use whatever type of stitch you find to be easiest. So all that's left here is to stitch up this last little bit across the wing. And you've made yourself a bat. So in the United States, there are about 40 different species of bats. Most of them eat insects. A couple of them are um, pollinators of plants and they eat the pollen and nectar from the, from the flower. But around the world, there are more than a thousand different species of bats. Most eat insects, some eat fruit. And some of them that live in the United States, most people have been bitten by a mosquito. Well, bats are definitely your friend if you are not a huge fan of mosquitoes. There are some types of bats that can eat up to a thousand mosquitoes in an hour. Yay, bats. There are also types of bats that eat moths and other insects that are pests for farmers and so farmers benefit a huge amount from bats that are eating the insects that eat their crops and it also helps all of us because it means that those farmers use less pesticides so it's healthier for everyone so hopefully you will learn even more about bats and enjoy your bat have fun